Welcome to another edition of A New Me, your weekly consultation with the Washington, D.C. area's best doctors and professionals. Our guest experts help you learn about the latest medical advances and procedures by providing you with the real information necessary to help you eliminate the dangers of making the wrong medical and cosmetic enhancement decisions. Get ready for your consultation. Coming up, we will be on location at the TMS Neuro Health Center in Tyson's Corner, Virginia, discussing the latest advances in psychiatric treatment for depression and how they can help improve your overall mental health and life with one of this area's top psychiatrists, Dr. Niku Singh. Dr. Singh received his medical degree from George Washington University Medical School and completed his psychiatry training from GW as well. He is a member of the American Psychiatric Association as well as the Washington Psychiatric Society among other organizations and is widely recognized as one of this region's top psychiatrists. Welcome Dr. Singh. Thank you. It's our pleasure to have you on our program. We've got a lot to talk about. I just wanted to get started right off the bat by asking you about a new treatment for those who are suffering from depression and if you can please tell us about it. Thank you very much. I'll be happy to do so and I'm very happy to be here to share this information. This is a very exciting time in neurosciences. We have started making advances in many different directions in treating mental illness. Depression is one of the most common mental illnesses out there and I'm happy to say that we have a state-of-the-art neuroscientifically based treatment called transcranial magnetic stimulation. Mm -hmm. Can you please uh, tell us about that? Transcranial magnetic stimulation, you'll see it abbreviated as TMS for short, okay. but essentially this uses a magnetic field to stimulate electrical currents in the brain to ultimately stimulate neurons that have not been functioning as well in terms of their responsibilities of producing certain neurotransmitters, chemicals in the brain, that are useful in helping patients with depression and with anxiety. Very interesting. Now, I wanted to ask you, Dr. Singh, has this treatment been cleared by the FDA? Yes, TMS has been cleared by the FDA since 2008. Only now is it becoming more widely available to patients, and we at TMS Neuro Health Centers here are very happy to be able to offer this treatment intervention to patients suffering from depression for so many years. I wanted to ask you, doctor, how does this treatment work within our brain? That is a very interesting question. I'm going to explain it as best as I possibly can without getting into the complexities of the TMS treatment. But essentially, if you think of the brain as a anatomical region that has a lot of electricity involved in its functioning, I know through physics that I can use a magnet to induce an electrical current. Moreover, since now in advances in neurology and psychiatry, we have learned of the different anatomical regions of the brain, i.e. the structure of the brain, I can use these principles to help guide electrical currents going down into certain regions of the brain that I know are malfunctioning in depression. By using a magnet to stimulate neurons on the surface of the brain in a very safe and precise manner, I can stimulate the neurons deeper in the brain that I know are to be diseased and causing depression. Mm. Now, how long would the treatment course take? The treatment course is variable depending on the individual patient. In general, however, the treatment course usually lasts for about four to six weeks, and the patient is involved in receiving TMS treatments daily, about five days out of seven days in a week, for those four to six weeks. And that is considered a TMS treatment course. That's not too long at all, Dr. Sang. We're looking at approximately four to six weeks, as you mentioned. And that's what a lot of patients say to me as well. Only four to six weeks for a therapeutic intervention that may help me deal with my life in a much more effective way than I have been dealing with for the last few decades. What is the goal of TMS related to medications? What we have noticed is that our patients with TMS have had the opportunity to decrease the doses of their medications. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they have had much fewer side effects that they have, were otherwise experiencing with medications. I wanted to ask you, Dr. Singh, how does TMS differ from, say, ECT? Another very interesting question. TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation, is quite different from ECT, electroconvulsive therapy, otherwise sometimes referred to as shock therapy. Remember that shock therapy is quite invasive, is done in a hospital setting, 
requires anesthesia and is inducing a seizure in the brain and then subsequently has lots of side effects including dizziness and possibly memory impairment that may or may not be long term. Transcranial magnetic stimulation, TMS, is done in a private practice setting or in an office setting, such as here in the TMS Neural Health Centers. Patients come in, there is no anesthesia involved, the treatment is, is benign, and patients after, the, after each treatment can go back to work or go back home without any restrictions on driving and do not need an escort to do such. Significant differences right there, uh, certainly in, in TMS's favor. Oh, absolutely. And our patients really appreciate this as well because many of them have actually undergone ECT treatments and are looking for something that is far more advanced and far more safe. Could you walk me through a treatment session? Absolutely. The treatment session begins with the patient sitting in the chair and I'm going to walk you through from a very first point of contact with the patient. The patient will actually sit in the chair. I or the TMS technician will get the patient in a comfortable seating position will set certain parameters in terms of their location of their head in relation to the magnet. We will eventually use the magnet and position it over a certain region in the brain that I know controls motor function, in other words, movement of the periphery. And by the periphery, I mean arms, legs, these type of things. We'll look for the thumb to twitch by using the magnet to stimulate that particular region of the brain that controls the thumb muscles. Once we've identified that region of the brain, we know from our experience and knowledge of neuroanatomy that the left dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, and I know that's a long word to take in, is located just about 5.5 centimeters in front of that location. That is the center that we are most interested in, in using the magnetic field to stimulate the neurons over there, which will then, I know, feed down into the limbic system of the brain and help the neurons that are not functioning well there start to function better, produce more of the neurotransmitters that we desire, and help the patients come out of depression. Now what does the patient feel during this process? And that too can be quite variable depending on patients, but in general the side effects and the experience of TMS are very benign. The most common side effect that's reported by patients is, and you'll be alarmed to hear this because it's so surprisingly safe, is a headache lasting about one hour after the treatment session is done, presumably because of the placement of the magnet on the cranium. But that's about it. No pain? No pain. Some patients may complain of a sensation there, but mm -hmm. there is really, a, beyond a headache, patients are not complaining of anything that is harmful or long-lasting. I wanted to ask you, Dr. Singh, if you can please tell us about what type of results your patients are receiving from this treatment. The results have been quite remarkable. I'll share an example of a patient with you, a woman who had come in on high doses of antidepressant and augmenting agents. She was suffering from a lot of systemic side effects. As you know, medications are systemic, meaning that they go throughout the body, and therefore the risk for side effects exponentially increases. And she was indeed having such side effects, including cognitive blunting, including weight gain. However, it did help, the medications did help her depression however, not substantially enough. Mm. She came to us for transcranial magnetic simulation treatment, and now I've had the opportunity to almost eliminate all of her medications, doing it in a very gentle and slow manner, but she reports, quote unquote, TMS has saved her life, end quotes. That's we significant. I mean, you're talking about saving someone's life, literally. Highly significant, and in fact, I think perhaps, in addition to the patient herself, one of our greatest supporters has been her young daughter who says that her mother is back. Oh, very happy to hear that. Thank you for sharing that with us, Dr. Singh. Now, how do you measure response or remission? Classically, the way that we measure response or remission is by doing what is otherwise standard in psychiatry. Obviously, there's going to be the subjective report of the patient, then there's going to be the objective observations of the clinician in terms of being able to observe a patient's change in their affective display, in more smiling, more communication, um, obviously looking into their work improvement history. Uh, if a patient comes back and says that their bosses have now been giving them compliments and that their concentration and focus at work is improving, that's a great objective marker of improvement. But in addition to that, we here will use psychometrics, meaning that we will actually use reporting scales to measure how the patients are improving. And who would you say, Dr. Singh, would be the, quote, ideal 
candidate for this TMS treatment. The ideal patient, according to the FDA and the research studies, is an adult patient okay. suffering from depression who has tried one antidepressant in the past and has not achieved the results that they're looking for. Our experience and the experience with TMS worldwide has been that anybody suffering from depression, um, some adolescents have, have undergone TMS treatment, adults certainly have gone TMS treatment with remarkable results. Therefore, the way that we do it is we look for somebody who has had significant amounts of suffering yeah. from depression, has not achieved the therapeutic response that they've wanted from treatment modalities at this point, and now we're looking at TMS as a novel mechanism towards helping patients achieve remission from depression, certainly a response from depression. So therefore, we look at somebody who is dealing with depression and has not succeeded in their treatment yeah. as an ideal candidate for TMS. How about the geriatric population? Number one, as you know, the geriatric population is a lot more vulnerable to yes. any sort of problems with any sort of intervention that's invasive or systemic. So one would make the argument that transcranial magnetic stimulation may very well be the ideal treatment, and there's that word again, for patients who are in the geriatric age group yeah. suffering from depression because, once again, it's not systemic. It doesn't drug-drug interact with any of their other medications because, as you know, medications sometimes don't mix very well. And so this may very well be a highly useful intervention, not only in the general population with depression, but specifically in the geriatric population. Yes, indeed. However, it has not necessarily been studied in the geriatric population in terms of FDA approval, but I will tell you that the research studies went as high as patients in their 70s. Are there any absolute contraindications? Yes, there is one absolute contraindication for TMS. Since we're going to be using a magnetic field to induce electrical stimulation of the brain, one of the things yeah. we have to be completely aware of is the presence of any sort of conducting metal in the brain, of any sort of ferromagnetic material that's located from the shoulders up. This may actually interact with the magnet and affect what is happening in the brain in terms of the electrical conductivity, certainly may in fact even cause a seizure. However, part of our customary and usual pre-screening will be to determine if there is any sort of absolute contraindication. Sometimes we do worry about a patient that has a very significant seizure disorder because once again we're talking about electrical conductivity in the brain and depending on the severity of the disorder, we may choose or may not choose to deliver TMS treatment in that type of patient. Do your patients have sustained results? All of our patients at this point have not talked about any sort of worsening of disease state, only improvement. However, I will say that the remission studies are still being done, and by remission I mean the sustained results, yes. permanent remission from depression. And we'll see how it looks like in a statistical population. But so far, our patients have not complained of any sort of return or worsening of symptoms. I wanted to ask you, Dr. Singh, why you decided to add TMS to your practice. One of the reasons why we all go into medicine is to be able to help patients. And until you actually see patients getting better, the reality of what you do doesn't set in. And I have had the opportunity now to see patients get better. Therefore, the second part of my answer is Transcranial magnetic stimulation, when I first learned of it, thought about its therapeutic modality of how it actually works, fascinated me completely in terms of understanding how I may be better able to help my patients. Patients suffering from depression with low quality of life have used pharmaceuticals and blessed the pharmaceuticals. They've been a wonderful asset in the practice of psychiatry and have helped patients live lives that have been more fruitful and more productive. However, I'm very excited to see the field of psychiatry and neurology expand into other types of therapeutic modalities, including looking at technology. And so now I have this opportunity to help patients with depression and to improve their quality of life through this scientifically advanced and progressive therapeutic modality called transcranial magnetic stimulation. You've really enlightened us and educated us on a very, very important treatment option TMS that can help millions of folks out there who are suffering from depression. And again, on that note, thank you for joining us, being a guest in our program. We'd love to have you back on in the future. And I'd love to join you again if you invite me to speak more on transcranial magnetic stimulation.